Color management is such a tricky beast. You can have a high quality monitor and profile it, and none of that guarantees that the images you see when you surf the web actually have the correct color. In fact, when I first set up my browser, I had horrible color. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can test that your web browser is giving you accurate color, how to fix it if it's not, and then go through some important considerations when it comes to wide gamut images and wide gamut displays when you're surfing the web. I've gone ahead and opened up multiple different websites in two browsers. We've got Firefox and then I've got Safari. So we're just gonna compare these side by side. Safari is already set up for proper color management. Everything looks great. This is the image you should be seeing here from my Facebook page. Whereas over in Firefox, it's not properly handling this image, which is an untagged sRGB image. And so all the colors got more vibrant. Notice the sky here is more punchy. The cloud back here is really kind of mangled with the color versus the correct color, which shows more definition. And then the foreground, I think, is the worst here, where it's really oversaturated and kind of dingy versus the correct color, which I think is just a much more natural looking color of the foreground grass. So that's one comparison. If we take a look at my Instagram page, we'll see here that the color in, again, we're in Firefox here, is much more saturated than it is in Safari. Safari is rendering the correct color for all the images, and Firefox is adding color pretty much everywhere. It's a lot more saturated. And then taking a look at a tutorial on my website, notice this YouTube thumbnail is looking good in Safari and over in Firefox is again, much more saturated. Now you might prefer this version. You might say, hey, great, I want all this extra color in the sky. That's a personal choice. I could easily have added that to this original version, but this is what I should get. This is what matches what I did in Photoshop. And the water here, this looks nice. Whereas in Firefox, it looks really strong in terms of magenta. It's definitely not the color I want. I want the correct color. I can get whatever color I want in Photoshop, but then I want it to stay the same on the browser so that you see what I saw. So this is a problem and it needs to be fixed. But there's some other interesting things going on with this web page. Notice this blue button is also changing quite a bit. It's a lot more saturated over in Firefox than it is in Safari. And then this image here is yet something else. It's actually the same in both. So what's going on that would cause Firefox to properly render one image, but not another, and also change the color of a button? Well, what's, what's happening is that this is an image that's hosted on my website. I uploaded it, it with an sRGB profile embedded in it. And because I control the image on my website, it's exactly the way that I uploaded it. This image is an sRGB image that I uploaded to YouTube. It had an embedded profile, but then YouTube reprocessed the image and stripped the embedded profile, presumably to make the file a little bit smaller so that they can send images faster over the internet. But in doing so, it's coming back to me with no embedded profile and Firefox should be assuming an untagged image is sRGB and it's not. So that's an issue over in Safari. Safari gets the same image and it says, wait, I don't see color. Space but I know that I should assume sRGB and it handles it correctly. Whereas in Firefox, it just says, okay, I'll show you that on the monitor with no correction. It's being rendered in the gamut of my monitor. And I'm using a wide gamut monitor with a color space similar to Adobe RGB, which has a lot more vibrant colors and the same numeric values coming from sRGB are way too strong when they're written as an Adobe RGB value. So it's not using the correct color space and that's why the color looks wrong here. And then this button is also falling into a similar camp. It's not an image. I'm just requesting a blue value to get the button. And what we get here in Safari looks correct because my color, which is effectively an untagged RGB value, is being properly assumed to be sRGB. Because again, I think that's the only safe assumption. Whereas in Firefox, it just renders it to the full gamut of the monitor, which makes it more punchy. Now, this one's a little trickier because as a web developer, you don't have great options to say which color space you want. You can't embed the profile. And in the future, we're gonna have standards that will allow us to specify the color very easily. And there's some support for that. Safari supports P3, but in general, it's not well supported. So as a web designer, you're left with a weird choice of do I want accurate color or do I wanna just let it render to the most brilliant thing that someone gets on their page when you design it? So I don't even know what the design intent is for CSS these days. That's a whole nother variable. But the important thing is that if the color is not specified, 
it really should be assumed to be sRGB. And so I would say that Safari is doing the right thing here. So we've got correct result with an embedded profile, correct result with an untagged image, and a correct result with untagged, if you will, CSS. So we need to fix what's going on here in Firefox. And to help with that, I've created an article that goes with this video that speaks to the various issues here and walks you through a series of tests. So let's take a look at the tests that just confirm there's an issue, and then we'll get down to how do we fix Firefox. So this first test here, as I hover over these different options, what's happening is this is an image that's being swapped out. So when I hover over sRGB, it's showing me the sRGB version of this image. When I hover over Rec 2020, it's giving me the Rec 2020 standard, which is a next generation broadcast standard and an important standard for the future. Now, the way that I created these is I started with an sRGB image, used the maximum gamut in sRGB, and then I created derivatives from that. So none of the colors in these other spaces are outside of the sRGB gamut, which is smaller than all these other spaces. So even though I'm changing color spaces, there's no change in the display here because none of these colors are ones that can't be handled in all of these spaces. So the correct result here is as you hover, you should see no change in these colors. They should look exactly the same as you move through them. That's what you want to see. If there's a shift, then your monitor is not handling embedded profiles correctly. And that's definitely a serious issue. Or I should say your browser is not handling them correctly. Looking at the next test, there are actually four different rows here. And so this is like one red block and there's a red block and a red block for them. What you want to see is that all four should be handled the same way for red and one column for green and one column for blue. But we're not, we're seeing different results. And what's happening is CSS, which again is like that button, if it's untagged, is not being handled correctly by Firefox. This should show up with a color that matches the actual sRGB image that's embedded with sRGB. And this next row similarly fails the same way. It's an sRGB image where I've stripped the profile uh, with the correct assumption in, in Safari that should match, but it doesn't. We're getting the more vibrant color. It's not properly processing that image. And then a bottom here is actually a pro photo image and it's tagged with pro photo and it's being properly rendered. So it matches. So we've failed this test. Then the next test here is looking at the ICC Color Organization's website. And this is a test of whether or not you're set up to support version four profiles. So profiles can be in version two or in version four. And if you don't know what you have, if you have my Lumenzi panel, you can actually click on the GAM button and the different gamuts that are listed here, you get a little note saying ICC V4 profile, letting you know which of these are version four profiles and the ones that are not marked are just version two. Not terribly important that you know that, and you probably won't run into that many version four profiles, though you certainly could, and so it's important that you support it. What we wanna see on this test is this top result. This is the test image, and these are the interpretations below. So we don't see a blue sky here, we see something else. And if we scroll down, we see that we're matching this version, which says that we're set up in Firefox to support version two ICC profiles, which is the only thing we've tried so far. All my images were in version two when they were tagged, but we're not supporting version four. So we could come across an image using the next generation standard that might not be rendered correctly. So we need to fix this as well. Switching back here, I've got a few other little demonstrations. So these next tests here, and I may rename this section, these really aren't tests as much as demonstrations. So this is different from what's above. In this case, I use the maximum gamut for each of these images. So this is sRGB at the maximum sRGB. Here's a P3 gamut rendered in the P3 space in Adobe RGB, Rec 2020, and Profoto. So here we're seeing a shift in color, and that's what you should see. This is demonstrating that my monitor supports something bigger than sRGB. If all of these look the same to you, then what that's telling you, if you look at the expected results here, what that would tell you is that you don't have a wide gamut monitor. And the only way you could fix that is by upgrading your monitor. This is not a problem with my web browser. This is just demonstrating to me the capabilities of my monitor. And then next up are some tests in WebKit. We'll come back to this in a moment, but let's first fix the color issues because we're not getting correct color and this is not gonna work as it should if we don't fix the color first. So I'm gonna scroll down 
And here I've got the section on how to configure color management in Firefox. What we want to do is just do a copy and paste of these bold words here. I want to take the about config, I'm going to copy it with command C, hit command T for a new tab, paste it in here as if I'm going to a website, and when I hit enter, it's warning me, hey, you know, you could break stuff here. This is the advanced settings. That's fine. And now we have to go and tell it which settings we want to change. So coming back here, the first one we want to do is pick up this setting here. And what this color management mode is doing is telling it how to deal with various assets. And it's currently set to ignore untagged images and just render them without assuming sRGB. I'm going to turn on full color management by setting it to one, which will then handle it correctly and fix those images. So I just paste this in. You can see it's in two. If I double click, I can hit one and enter. And you see this little return. If you click this, you go back to the default settings. So you can always undo it with that but let's make sure we set it to the new value so we enable full color management and properly handle those other assets that are untagged. Now we'll grab the next one. This one is gonna help us deal with version four profiles. We need to make it true. So we go over here, just paste it in, double click to make it true. Coming back, the next one is the rendering intent. This one is totally optional, probably won't make any difference on your screen, but the default setting in Firefox is perceptual, which I would rather use relative color metric. It's not going to matter most of the time because most profiles will show perceptual exactly the same as color metric. But for those rare cases where there's a difference, I want to use my preferred rendering intent. So we're going to go paste this and change it from zero over to one. And at this point, we can close this and we can go and just restart the browser. So I'm going to go quit Firefox and then just go relaunch it. And when it comes back up, it's going to be reloaded with the new color management settings in it. And so now when we scroll down, notice we're now passing this test. All the colors look exactly the same. So we fix that issue. And then we had the ICC test. If we look at the ICC website, now we're passing this test. It looks correct. We had a nice blue sky. That's all looking good. And if we take a look at the first test here, we're still Everything matches, no surprise there. That's all should look the same. Our wide gamut demonstration is still showing us the extra color we could get by embedding with larger profiles. And you, know, and you might be wondering, you know, why not go to these broader color profiles? They look like they're adding some benefit. And I would say if you're hosting an image on your own website and you can control the profile as I am with, for example, this image here, go for it because browser support for embedded profiles is really good these days and I think that's fine. However, for things like social media posts, this image is having its profile stripped over in Instagram. All my images here are having their profile stripped. In Facebook, you get a different result where the large image will keep the embedded profile and in the feed it's stripped. So these are behaviors that might change, but the point is social media currently reprocesses your images and by removing the profile, you're gonna have some problems. So I would not use wide gamut images for social media, but on your own website, I'd say it's a safe thing to do. Uh, next one here, I mentioned we've got some test images. These are from WebKit. This is the open source organization that powers a lot of the Safari browser. Make sure you fixed color before you look at this, because if you haven't fixed it, you could get some wonky results. But here we can see the image in sRGB versus wide gamut on the right with P3. And this is not very real world in the sense that you're not gonna see something so extreme like this often, but it does nicely demonstrate what happens with a wide gamut image. It could be rendered to something like this in sRGB where there's a complete loss in differences between these shades of red because the closest match in sRGB happens to be the same for both of these colors from P3. Scrolling down, we can see, for example, here, the sky gets a lot more brilliant in wide gamut P3. The shoes get a lot more punchy under Adobe RGB with wide gamut. So there's a lot of benefits to the wider gamut when you're viewing on a wide gamut display. What I think is most interesting, I'm going to skip all the way down here to this flower. And look at this. In Pro Photo, the petals look really nice, really well defined. And in sRGB, they get really modeled. It doesn't look as dimensional. That flattening effect where all these colors get rendered to similar colors or even to kind of a magenta color, it really kind of wrecks the image. So that's something you need to watch out for if you're sending your images out to the world in sRGB. 
Some subjects like this flower may suffer a little bit and there are some things you can do to address that, but you just need to be aware of those differences. Now coming back to the test site here, lastly, we just want to finish taking a look at the CSS. I mentioned that there's a next generation standard coming that can help address these color. And you see here that this block is white in this test. What's happening here is that Firefox does not support colors specified for CSS in P3. So it just doesn't render them at all. I don't have a fallback setting. Whereas if I switch over to uh, Safari and we go to the same part of that page you see in Safari, we do get wide gamma and these should not match in Safari if you're using a wide gamma monitor. So here I'm getting a more brilliant set of especially reds and greens. And what's nice about this is this is the correct color. So for most browsers these days, you really can't take advantage of a wider gamut because there's no proper color management. But in the future, we're gonna have something more like this. So don't worry if you fail this test, it's pretty likely you will. There's not some setting you can change. You just have to wait for your browser to improve over time. Now, like I said, I kind of walked through Firefox. If you have a different browser, I've got some notes on what to do with Chrome, but generally speaking, it works really well out of the box. Safari, same kind of deal, and so on. Phones can be a little bit trickier. There's a lot of uh, various challenges there and they're harder to manage. And this is really just kind of a cursory overview of things. So be sure to add some comments below if you have any questions or you want to follow on video to explore any of these topics in greater depth. And be sure to click to this next video to learn more about how you can get great color with your images.